after the presentment of this information, the Decatur County Grand Jury handed down indictment of especially aggravated kidnapping and first degree felony murder on Zachary Rye Adams. For the last three years, the small community of Parsons has lined the streets with pink bows like these, hoping to see Holly once again. But I don't, nah, I don't think Zach done that One man who knows Zach thinks he's been wrongfully targeted. I think he's an old country boy, and he's been in dope so long that now, by God, they're trying to hang him. Just because of the announcement today doesn't mean that we are finished. Law enforcement will continue its efforts. Thousands upon thousands of law enforcement man hours have been dedicated to this investigation, and we are dedicated to ensuring that justice is done. Parsons, Tennessee is a stereotypical small West Tennessee town. Well, it's just a small town. Everybody knows everybody. Uh, we may not be blood related, but, but we're all family. It's a small place and a good place to live. And Bobo is a name everyone knows in one way or another. I grew up in the same na neighborhood as her dad. Holly was one of my best friends. I was Holly's teacher at the time of her abduction. And, and I'm personal friends of the Bobo family. And Holly's life touched their hearts. And most of the time what we were doing was just being silly and just joking around. Beautiful young lady, had a bright future ahead of her. And her disappearance broke them. Can you imagine not knowing where your child is when you get up? It's broken everybody's heart. You know, even though it's been three years, we're all still kind of floored by what we've learned and, you know, what we've found out. You know, it's, uh, it's tough and we'll never completely get over it, no. That's right, guys. The new MTSU parking system was supposed to make things easy for students. But for students who might be colorblind, telling the difference between green and red isn't so simple. Patrick suffers from dichromacy, a form of color blindness that makes the color red and green almost impossible to identify. With commuter students using a green pass and campus residents using a red pass, a student with color blindness could potentially not be able to tell the difference and get a parking ticket based off a disability they can't control. But for now, provides this advice. I think, you know, we are talking about college students here. No, because we pay the tuition. This, that, that's not our job. That's not our job to, pay, to, to call your phones and ask for your help. You should be helping us. Tennessee Board of Regents Chancellor John Morgan laid out the potential impact for four-year institutions across the state. Now, the estimates that were done when Tennessee Promise was being uh, constructed, when the financial models were being built, suggested that uh, there would be about a 20 percent or so increase in first-time, full-time freshmen at two-year schools. According to state statistics, for every 1 percent drop in enrollment, MTSU loses about 1.5 million dollars in revenue. But recently, University President Sidney McPhee unveiled a plan to help offset the community college and trade school incentive. His plan would give the $500 of HOPE scholarship that freshmen and sophomores will lose as a part of Tennessee Promise back to them. One of the great things about this uh, new building is the classroom spaces and the technology in the classroom spaces. We've got six lecture halls in here and I'll show you the first one here in the lobby. So we're inside the Mimic Center and this is the scanning electron microscope and uh, these electron microscopes that are here are used to look at uh, items that are too small to see with a light microscope. So we can uh, magnify things almost to the point where we can see individual atoms in the sample. So I'd like to take you up and uh, show you one of the research labs in biology. The Molecular Biosciences program uh, has a laboratory up here and they're working on uh, extracts from Chinese medicines. So the work that I'm going to show you is also uh, uh, part of the Tennessee Center for Botanical Medicine research. So this is one of our biology research labs and there are several interesting features of these new labs in the new building. The lab we're in right now is a laboratory that is uh, heavily involved in uh, botanical medicine research. So they are looking at, uh, at uh, extracts from uh, these ancient Chinese remedies. That it also has some neat features around the uh, sides of the room. It's got flat panel displays on the walls, five of them, that allow students to gather around, bring their computers and do group work. They can plug in and uh, it's also set up that you can uh, have a lecture in here and the professor can take the output or the input from any of those uh, flat panel displays and project it on the uh, main projector for uh, the entire class to see. There's a big projector screen that can come down. We have floor inputs here and so we could line up seating here and use this for a seminar for special guests. 
Voters gathered at 48 different precincts today to voice their opinions. I did vote no. Um, I don't believe it's the government's right to interfere with our personal decisions on that level. I'm, I'm a Christian and I, I actually am pro-life and I do believe that that's very important to protect life. If you, if you like to argue, if you don't vote, you have no right to argue. <laughs> <laughs> so no matter what the motivation, these voters were proud to cast their vote in this year's election. I have actually been awarded $26,000 in college scholarship from this organization. And that's exchange for the service that I do this year as Miss Tennessee. But this isn't just sequins, stilettos, and smiles, but also life lessons that the women can take with them forever, like former title holder Holly Harris. With evening gowns on and all lights on center stage, contestants Emily Ketron and Hannah Hausman captured the crowns. I am so overwhelmed and grateful. God has really blessed me with this. I was definitely not expecting it. And as a 17-year-old, I am so ready to make a statement at Miss Tennessee. Well, I, I, my biggest thing is don't let your disability control you. Don't let your disability take your body from you. It's no longer going to be a matter of can I go to college. It's going to be a matter of I know I can. What do I need to do to be ready to do that? And where do I want to go? And many of those students.